Hey folks, Matt from Art of the Image here. Thought we'd take a look at the Nikon 18 to 55 kit lens. Now this lens is available as the uh, version 2 at around 130 bucks, or the version, the VR version of it, um, that comes with it as a kit as well. And it is about 199. Those prices are BH prices in the U.S. dollars. So um, if you want to check those out at BH Photo Video, that's where I usually check for my U.S. pricing. In Canada, they're a, a, probably a tad more. We tend not to be, even though our dollar seems to be stronger lately, they don't have things on par yet. Um, so basically, the 18-55, to 55, um, a lot of people overlook this lens thinking, oh, it can't be that great, it's just a cheap kit lens. And the fact of the matter is the 18-55 to 55 is actually a super sharp lens and not a bad performer at all, especially when you factor in what it costs. Um, basically, if you want to have a good overview of the MTF charts, the resolution charts, and it shows how sharp this lens is, check out photozone.de. They have a lot of the Nikon lenses and the Canon lenses and some other lenses listed. And they'll show you the resolution charts and they'll show you how sharp the lens is. It's a good place to go if you're looking at evaluating buying a lens. So I have the resolution charts here for the Nikon 18 to 55. And basically the uh, it's it's pretty stellar performance for such an inexpensive lens. It's at uh, 2000 plus right across the board um, from 18 to 55. Uh, anything over 2000 is stellar for a lens and as our megapixels keep getting more and more on their sensors it's important that the lens is very sharp because you don't want your camera to be out uh, able to out resolve your lens so let's take a look here the 18 to 55 at 18 millimeters wide open at f 3.5 aperture is 2251.5 that is fantastic. You're not going to find uh, to any any lenses, even um, much higher price lenses, are not going to beat that as far as the resolution. So very very sharp, wide open at 18 millimeters, at 24 millimeters, 2,167. Very very good. That's wide open. That's at 3.8 by that point in the zoom because it is a variable aperture lens. The, uh, at 35 millimeters, we're looking at 2,054.5. Again, very, very good. And at 55 millimeters wide open, f5.6, the center is at 1992. So we're just shy of 2,000, but by f8, we're at 2,026.5. So pretty much 2,000 plus right across the board here, which is excellent, absolutely phenomenal for a lens that you can pick up for 129 bucks or 200 bucks with the VR on it. So some other things I wanted to cover with you on the 18 to 55 I've got some pros and cons here so some of the negatives then and with a lens that is this price there are a few negatives there are a few cons but bear in mind you could really say for the price they're not really cons or negatives because do you expect more than that at that price I'm going to bring them up anyways, just so you're aware of what some of its weaknesses are. Um, the lens is a little bit flare prone, so you want to be careful with it when you're shooting in direct sunlight and in certain lighting. Uh, one of the easy ways to get around that is to get one of those cheap rubber hoods that you can buy in most camera stores. You get one for the, the right size diameter of the lens, which is a 52 millimeter thread. It takes 52 millimeter filters and 52 millimeter um, hood. So if you get one of those extendable rubber hoods that you can fold back to whatever length you need depending on what where you're at for your zoom that'll solve pretty much all your problems for the flare prone issues right there so that's easily correctable um, bokeh is another area where the lens isn't the greatest but it's a variable aperture lens it's not a fast lens and we're usually not looking at quality of bokeh in a zoom that's not a constant uh, aperture zoom such as an f2.8 or something like that um, simply because you're you know when you're buying a variable aperture zoom you're not really into the level of lens that the bokeh is going to be absolutely stellar something like a, you know the 50 mil f1 4g or the, the new 85 f1 4g has a stellar bokeh so not a big factor but just be aware of it it's not going to have the nicest bokeh by bokeh i mean that blown out background that that out of focus 
area and the when I say it's not going to look that great, some of the, the blown out area can have some pattern to it that may not look as nice or as smooth as a more expensive lens. The um, front element in the 18-55, to it rotates. So it basically spins and not a big deal, although it can be annoying if you're somebody that uses filters a lot. So I mean, obviously in the higher price lenses, the more preferable thing is to, to not have uh, an element that spins. It's just an aspect of the design. It makes it a little cheaper to manufacture. You get into the higher priced lenses and you have an IF lens, which is internal focusing, which means the outside of the lens doesn't move while it's focusing. So the other thing that you could, you could look at as possibly a negative with the lens is that it does have a short travel for the focus ring. So if you're trying to manual focus the lens, because it doesn't have a long travel to focus, it focuses very quickly, it can be a little touchy to try and get that, uh, that lens to focus manually and, and, and to do that. Whereas if you had a longer travel on the ring, then you'd have more room to finesse it to get to your manual focus points. So those are the negatives, the weaknesses that I'm going to cover on the lens. Again, for the price point, they're really not issues and most of them are, are correctable. Like for instance, the flare issue is, uh, you know, get yourself the rubber hood and it's gone. The pros of the lens is that if you get, especially if you get the VR version, you get two to three stops of image stabilization with the VR, which is excellent, very helpful. And for a $200 lens to get VR, I mean, that was unheard of even a few years ago. So that, that's really great. The, um, that'll allow you to shoot as low as a tenth of a second handheld if you're steady and you got your breathing right. Some people can even get it lower. It all depends on you, how much coffee you've had to drink, and how good your shooting technique is. But all in all, the VR is an excellent addition. The size and weight of the lens are great. It's small, it's lightweight, it's a good match for the cameras it's intended for, such as the D3100, the D3000, the D5000, even the D7000. And you can actually use it on the full frame bodies as well. It just goes into, uh, into DX mode. So um, great, small, lightweight lens and size and weight is very good, very balanced for the smaller cameras it's aimed at for, for more of a, the entry level cameras. It is a uh, fast and accurate focusing lens, no problems there. It's uh, quick and very accurate in its focusing, so it has the AFS motor in it, so you can obviously use this with any of your cameras that can't focus with a non-AF um, AFS lens. So, you know, your D3100 needs an AFS uh, lens. This lens qualifies, no problem. Um, it's very, very sharp, as I covered earlier with the MTF uh, results, right across the board, tack sharp for the price, it's phenomenally sharp, um, even even not even looking at the price. This is a very sharp lens. It's it, very impressive sharpness characteristics. Um, one of the things that people tend to tends to get hidden in the paperwork or don't notice with this lens is this extremely close focusing lens. 0.9 feet it can focus to. That's 0.28 meters. So very close focusing lens for close up. You're not going to find even some of the higher price zooms aren't going to be able to focus in that close. So that's a big bonus for this little this little gem. The um, distortion uh, isn't bad. It's uh, about 2.2%, 2.7%, depends on which uh, who you're looking at for reviews and who's tested it. Um, distortion, chromatic aberration, vignetting. You're going to see some of these on this lens. You're going to see some of these on any variable aperture lens, the 18 to 105, the 16 to 85. All of these things are correctable in post, and some of the cameras will even correct for, for some, if not all of this, right in, in the camera itself. So I don't really consider these a, a shortfall of a lens these days. Used to be something we'd be, we would be critical of because it was very hard to correct for. Now, the software is correcting for it very easily, if not automatically, and it's really not something to consider or to worry about when you're purchasing a lens. So I don't even worry about that on, on this lens or on any of my other, uh, the other variable aperture zooms. Um, this lens gives you a field of view in 35 millimeter equivalent is 27 to 82.5 millimeters. So if you're, if you're relating it to the old 35 millimeter or full frame FX, that's the field of view this gives you, 27 to 82.5 millimeters. So uh, it's a really nice little lens. Um, for the price, very good performer, stellar performer, one of the closest focusing lenses of any of the zooms, and um, 
So it's, it's something that uh, I encourage you not to overlook just because you think it, you know, it's a cheap kit lens or that there might be some stigma attached to that because all in all, uh, it's an excellent performer for the price and any weaknesses that have mostly can be overcome such as uh, the distortion, chromatic aberration on the wide end. Um, the software will take care of that for you, no big deal. And um, the, the, the lens flare, you can get a rubber hood for that. So really, um, anything that the lens you might say is a weakness is, is, is not a serious problem. And for the price, this is a really good little lens. So um, as with any of my lens suggestions, go to the store, put it on your camera, try it out, see what you think. Take a few shots, look at it in the back of the viewfinder if it's something you think you can work with. You know, you're not going to really go wrong with this as a starter lens. It's a good value for the price. You can't really beat it. Um, the next step up and something that's, you know, twice the price is the 18-105 to 105 VR. And we'll discuss that in another video, but that would probably be the next one you'd be looking at as far as the hierarchy of lenses and the hierarchy of price. So, anyways, I hope that helps you out. 18-55 to 55 VR or even the non-VR if you want to spend like 130 bucks. You can't beat the price on these little lenses. They are a fantastic lens and it's certainly a great starter lens to start out with. Okay, thanks for tuning in, folks. We'll have some more videos for you, some more posts soon on Art of the Image. Take care.